The Arts and Crafts has left an indelible mark on all designer makers since its formation. The idea of venerating the craftsmen and in venerating these craft skills is intrinsic to the designer makers process. So William Morris and the Arts and Crafts movement is one of the cornerstones of my uh, practice and career. I got an email from the Crafts Council uh, from the directory team, which was a selected call for entries for what was termed a new range for Red House. I read it and I thought, that's me. Uh, that's going to be me. Red House is the only house commissioned, created and lived in by William Morris, who is the founder of the Arts and Crafts Movement. Every single thing in the house was hand designed by him and his group of friends. And really, we took a step back and actually looked at it. And that's when we approached the Crafts Council and said, we think that what we need to do and what Morris would do is to look at what would be a contemporary response to arrange something that's going to be handcrafted and very much in the spirit of what Morris and his friends were doing. The piece that I'm making for Red House is called Tending the Flame and its function is to sit in the cafe and be used to display cakes and other items that are going to be available for people to buy. Um, the piece is being inducted into the collection at Red House as a contemporary response to the original range that once sat in the kitchen. Although my piece isn't going to be used for the same purpose, we wanted to invoke the idea of fire and uh, the stove by using fire as a mark maker on our piece. So that's why in the garden at Red House we're going to be setting the piece alight in what we're calling the burn ceremony, uh, which will leave this indelible mark which speaks of how it was made. Having sort of taken my initial measurements and photos and information, uh, precedents and things like that from Red House, I came back up north and I started organising the information I had. But truthfully, having done that, I was a little bit stuck. It wasn't coalescing around a sort of a physical idea. And that's when I showed the information to my brother. Having taken him through all of these different aspects, I got to the bit about I had this idea of maybe charring the surface or burning it somewhere. And Howard said, why don't you set it on fire? And we both looked at each other and thought, that's an idea. You know, that is something that we can hook the rest of the design on. The richness that there is, it's, it's, it's mostly in the brickwork, especially the external brickwork, but and especially the fireplaces. The piece needed to show that the maker really understood the material. Right, yeah. The piece was about engagement with materials. This is arts and crafts ethos. This is understanding the material, understanding the process yeah. and, and engaging with it in such a way that it's evident on the finished piece. The next step was contacting the collaborators I wanted to work with on the project. The first person I contacted was John Mayle, who has been producing the metal work. Working with John was a delight. He's just like me, except he works in metal in a studio in Manchester. And he was a brilliant person to collaborate with because he was so up for and enthusiastic about the project. The paddles are two metal plates with long handles, which allow the base of the fire to be cradled in such a way that it doesn't burn through and can be moved around inside the piece as the burn takes place. Crucially though, these paddles are repurposed after the burn to become the cake serving utensils, which will be used at Red House. And it's a real joy to work with people who you can trust with those kind of things because of course they came back and they nailed it. The make started with constructing the triangulated legs. The box shelf became a form that was added to the top of the burn funnel. Those were the easy bits because the next bit was making the burn funnel, which is a really difficult shape to make. Every corner is dovetailed and then all of these slats are mounted on a set of four braces, which are then connected to the underside of the box section. There was no way of getting around it other than just to brute force it and, and put the hours in. But the reason that those slats exist is because they're specifically cut so they take the flame and this gave the piece a, a sort of a recognisable aesthetic which we could then translate into all the other parts like the urn that sits in the, uh, at the base. Seeing any piece completed uh, in the studio is always a joy and the Red House piece was no exception to this, in fact it was even more so because 
it doesn't have a typology. It's not a chair or a table. There's no reference point to it. In that way, it's more of a sculpture. Getting it there and on site and lifted into position in the back garden at Red House was wonderful. Positioning it in front of the dormer window immediately became clear to anyone who was viewing it from the point at which it was designed to be seen where that inspiration had come from. What everybody mentioned when they saw it for the first time was how crafted it was. And for me, that was a, a really positive thing to hear, partly because it really was crafted. It was crafted by hand, it was made by hand. But also that craftsmanship is the ethos of the arts and crafts. The burn ceremony was the final act of making this piece. As it was, the burn went far better than any of the trials that we'd done and the piece caught in places that we hadn't even expected it to. Seeing the piece in place at Red House in the Kitchen uh, was the culmination of six months' work. And for me, that's, that's the best part of any project, seeing it in the context in which it was designed to live in. And I was asked actually a couple of times on the evening by volunteers at Red House, what did I think that Morris would make of the idea of burning the piece? Was this something he did? I don't care particularly if he would have liked the aesthetic, I think he would have championed the, the means by which it was created. It had left this analog crafted mark on this piece, which really spoke of how we'd engage with materials just as Morris would have wanted. There is an element of every architect um, or person who's trained as an architect as I have, which is the desire to leave a legacy and I feel particularly proud to have left a part of my legacy at a place that I felt was so intrinsic to my own education in design.